The core concept of alchemy revolves around the opus, a sacred pursuit for the ultimate truth and value. Alchemical writings extensively discuss the nature of the opus and the attitude one should adopt while undertaking it. One text says, O oh, all ye seekers after this art, ye can reach no useful result without a patient, laborious, and solicitous soul, persevering courage, and continuous regimen. Certain virtues are deemed essential prerequisites, acting as requirements for one's ego functioning. Patience forms the foundation, while courage entails facing anxiety with determination. The continuous regimen demands unwavering dedication to understanding and examining the unfolding events, regardless of shifts in mood or mental state. A significant aspect of the opus is its sacred nature, demanding a religious approach. Woe unto you who fear not God, for he may deprive you of this art. Our art, its theory as well as its practice, is altogether a gift of God, who gives it when and to whom he elects. It is not of him that wills or of him that runs, but simply through the mercy of God. This necessitates a mindful awareness of the transpersonal realm of the psyche, prompting one to be self-oriented rather than ego-oriented. The paradox lies in the fact that the ultimate goals of psychotherapy involve attaining self-awareness and a religious attitude, which are not initially mandatory, but must exist as potential from the outset. To find the philosopher's stone, as an alchemist says, one must begin with a fragment of it. As the process deepens, it becomes evident that insights come through grace, and personal development occurs not through the ego's will, but by the urge for individuation from the self. Another vital aspect of the opus is its highly individualistic nature, with alchemists being primarily solitaries. While they might have had one assistant, the process of individuation is fundamentally experienced alone, in its deepest essence. The opus cannot be a collaborative effort. It brings about a certain detachment from the world for a certain period. But when God grants his grace to someone who understands the art, this will appear incomprehensible in the eyes of the world, and those who have this mystery will be scorned of men and looked down upon. This corresponds to psychotherapy, which is incomprehensible from an external perspective. The collective and conventional standpoint tend to scorn and ridicule it, either through the judgment of others or one's own inner critic. Parallel to this text are these words of Jesus. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, because I have chosen you out of the world, for that reason, the world hates you. Secrecy is another significant feature of the opus. Alchemists considered themselves guardians of a mystery that should not be disclosed to the unworthy. Therefore, you should carefully test and examine the life, character, and mental aptitude of any person who would be initiated in this art. And then you should bind him by a sacred oath not to let our magistery be commonly or vulgarly known. Only when he begins to grow old and feeble, he may reveal it to one person, but not to more and that one man must be virtuous and generally approved by his fellows. For this magistery must always remain a secret science, and the reason that compels us to be careful is obvious. If any wicked man should learn to practice this art, the event would be fraught with great danger to Christendom, for such a man would overstep all bounds of moderation and would remove from their hereditary thrones those legitimate princes who rule over the peoples of Christendom, and the punishment of this wickedness would fall upon him who had instructed that unworthy person in our art. In order then to avoid such an outbreak of overweening pride, he who possesses the knowledge of this art should be scrupulously careful how he delivers it to another, and should regard it as the peculiar privilege of those who excel in virtue. From a psychological standpoint, the matter becomes more nuanced. A secret that can be shared loses its true essence, the psyche secrets are safeguarded as they remain incommunicable to those who haven't experienced them firsthand. The misuse of this secret, as mentioned in the text, hints at an inflation where the ego identifies with archetypal images. Failure to treat transpersonal energies as sacred and concealed may lead to their misapplication, resulting in destructive consequences. This misuse of the alchemical mystery can be likened to the misuse of the Eucharistic mystery, as stated by the Apostle Paul. Anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will be guilty of desecrating the body and the blood of the Lord. A man must test himself before eating his share of the bread and drinking from the cup, 
For he who eats and drinks eats and drinks judgment on himself if he does not discern the body. When approached without discernment, the profound significance of both mysteries is lost, and their transformative potential is squandered. Hence, protecting the sacredness and secrecy of these experiences is vital for their proper understanding and meaningful impact on one's journey of self-discovery. The alchemical opus represents a profound concept, viewed as a process initiated by nature, but requiring conscious human effort to reach completion. This state cannot be perfected by the mere progress of nature, for gold has no propensity to move itself so far, but rather chooses to remain in its constantly abiding body. Nature serves art with matter, and art serves nature with suitable instruments and method convenient for nature to produce such new forms. And although the Philosopher's Stone can only be brought to its proper form by art, yet the form is from nature. In one aspect, the opus seems to oppose nature, but in another, the alchemist is assisting nature in accomplishing what it cannot do alone. This notion aligns with the evolution of consciousness. While the impulse toward consciousness resides within nature, embedded in the unconscious psyche, an ego is necessary to fully realize this innate urge. It is essential for individuals to intentionally cooperate in the task of fostering consciousness within themselves. The most profound statements concerning the alchemical opus draw parallels between it and the creation of the world. Zosimos expresses, The symbol of chemistry is founded on the creation of the world, while the emerald tablet concludes its alchemical recipe with the words, Thus the world has been created. Another text, after describing the preparation of a special water, continues as follows. When this has been done, take a drop of the consecrated red wine and let it fall into the water and you will instantly perceive a fog and thick darkness on top of the water, such as also was at the first creation. Then put in two drops, and you will see the light coming forth from the darkness, whereupon little by little put in every half of each quarter hour first three, then four, then five, then six drops, and then no more, and you will see with your own eyes one thing after another appearing by and by on top of the water, how God created all things in six days and how it all came to pass, and such secrets as are not to be spoken aloud, and one also have not power to reveal. Fall on your knees before you undertake this operation. Let your eyes judge of it, for thus was the world created. From a psychological perspective, these texts equate the individual with the world, implying that individuation is a process akin to world creation. This idea shares similarities with Schopenhauer's bold statement in his work, The World as Will and Idea, where he claims, The world is my idea, and Jung's notion of the world-creating quality of consciousness. Although such ideas are potentially prone to solipsistic inflation and can be common in psychosis, they possess an archetypal significance, providing individuals with a necessary perspective to avoid being consumed by collective, impersonal norms. Despite the complexity and confusion often found in alchemical writings, the basic outline of the opus is relatively straightforward. The primary goal is to create a transcendent and miraculous substance, symbolized in various ways as the philosopher's stone, the elixir of life, or the universal medicine. The procedure involves initially discovering the appropriate material, referred to as the prima materia, and then subjecting it to a series of operations that lead to the transformation into the Philosopher's Stone.